Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Anne and this is Postcards from My Golden Years. Today we're going to talk about great places to find places to stay on vacation, whether it's an Airbnb, hotels, um, unique housing, whatever you might be looking for. I'm going to show you where I go when I am booking our vacations. I will show you how to effectively search for the right property for you. And so let's get started. So to get started, when you're booking your own vacation, I know for some it's overwhelming. You come from a period of time where you used to pick up the phone and call a travel agent, and that was how you traveled. Well, things have changed since the, uh, the advent of the World Wide Web back in the, the late mid to late 90s. So I became a trailblazer out there in the internet world and became a an expert researcher on the internet and I found that if you take the time and you know what you're looking for you can find anything out there on the internet. In my last video I showed you the best way to find great deals on booking airfare, how to search, where great places are to search. Now in this video we're going to talk about finding places to stay in whatever city or cities you're going to. So the first place I go, again, just like with airfare, I go to Google. Google Hotel Search. So basically I get a, a Google search page in front of me. I type in Google Travel Hotels and then I click on Google Hotel Search. Okay, so right now it's showing me hotels in Naples, Florida, which is not what I want. But just like in my last video, we were booking airfare to Paris, right here is where you type in where you're headed, whether it's Paris, France, or Oshkosh, Wisconsin, you type that in right there, and then you pick dates. And I'm gonna use the dates that I used in my last video. And that was September 24th, to the 30th, two people, of course, and now, why, where did that go? Okay, let's get that back up there. Paris, France. So now Google is giving me, it's got a total of 2,676 hotels for me to look at. Now, if I want to look at a certain price range, I go up to price and, okay, I'm not gonna find a hotel room for $34, we know that. So I am gonna put in there the equivalent of around $250 and just see what we get. Okay, and sure enough, this is what appeared. Now, I can also change whether I want four-star hotels, four or five-star. Um, I can look for specific amenities like free Wi-Fi, uh, restaurant, pet-friendly. In Paris, a lot of hotels are pet-friendly, far more than here in the U.S. If I'm looking for parking or free parking, I would specify. Um, okay. Um, I don't care about a pool. When I go to France, I'm not looking for swimming opportunities. Okay, and then there are some other offers here. I might want to put in special offers. Okay. Um, now, I'll start with four-star rating. I'm not always expecting to see hotels with four-star ratings um, because I've been in some very nice hotels that had two or three-star ratings. But just for fun, I'm going to leave it there and see what we come up with. So now it's giving me a whole list of hotels in different areas. Uh, let's pick this hotel, for example. I have been to this hotel, and this hotel is excellent. I think 
the last time my husband and I stayed in Paris, we stayed here. Now, let me give you a little bit of information in case you happen to be planning a trip to Paris. Every Paris hotel, restaurant, everything in Paris has an address, obviously, and they have what looks like a U.S. zip code. The last number or numbers in that zip code, that tells you what part of Paris it's in. So this tells me it's in the sixth arrondissement. Each arrondissement is a different part of Paris. They call them arrondissements. Uh, so now I know that that one's in the sixth arrondissement. And I may want to look at a map, or you may want to look at a map. And you can find them online, uh, a map of Paris arrondissements. Just pull up a map here. How does this one look? Uh, well, let's get one with words on it. Let's see what that looks like. Okay. So this tells me that that particular hotel is in the Saint Germain de Pre area. And these are all of the things that are in bold are things to see in Paris. So if I am looking for a hotel that is in this area, you see all the numbers? Those are all the numbered arrondissements. If I'm looking for hotels in that area, I'm gonna look for hotels that have zip code or area with zip, uh, that have the code, the address code. I don't think they call it a zip code in Paris, but I want something that's got a six at the end. Um, so if I see double number, like a 19 at the end, you're not looking for the ninth, you're looking for 19. So it would be a zero and then 19 before that. So just so you have a heads up on how to search for things. So back here at the Victoria Palace Hotel, we see that that is in the Saint-Germain-de-Pre area. And you can take a look at what information Google has on this place and prices. Now, it is always cheaper to book directly at the hotel website. I have never, ever found a situation when it's not. So I... So I click on website and it brings me to Victoria Palace. Often you'll see a choice here of English or another language. Of course, you want English if you speak English. Uh, and here you'll find the website and you can do your own searching for that particular hotel. Now, another resource that I use for searching for deals on hotels is Expedia. So Expedia, you can search here. Again, you put in the city that you're going to, Saint-Germain-de-Pre, you put in the, the time that you want to arrive. And again, September 24th to the 30th in this particular case, and then you search. And it will come up with a list of hopefully great hotels for you to select. Okay, it's, there we go. So there it's populating and look how expensive that one is, wow. That looks unbelievable. I wanna check on that one and just see what that is for fun because I know I'm never gonna stay there. Um, it's an apartment hotel. Why is that so expensive? Wow. Quite posh looking. Okay, well, it's in a very upscale part of town. Anyway, um, so there I would search there. Now, another option, if you're over 50 and you're a member of AARP, 
You can search on Expedia, but go to Expedia-AARP.com and you can search and typically you'll find a little bit of a discount because this will locate hotels and apply an AARP discount if the hotel happens to accept AARP. I will say that typically hotels in Paris or, or most countries outside of the USA, they're not affiliated with AARP unless you pick an international chain like um, uh, Hilton or um, some other international world name chain. I typically don't stay in chain hotels outside of the US. So I don't typically go for them. I find the hotels that are not chain hotels to be much more charming, particularly in Paris. So I mean, another option is hotels.com. So let's look yes. at so we're at hotels.com. So I'm going to type in Paris, France. And we're going to do a check in September 24th to 30th. One room, two travelers. And we're going to, oh, I took away my carrot. Okay, let's see what hotel.com does or below. There we go. Okay, there's hotels.com's results. Okay, now I didn't specify any kind of price range, but this is now going to give me a list of the different hotels in the city. Now, it doesn't necessarily tell you where they are located. Let me pull that one up and see if it shows. Okay, here is the address for this hotel. And you see that it's the last number on its zip code is a one. So going back to that map, you look over here for a one and it starts with the smaller numbers in the center and it goes two, three, four, five, six, seven, all the way around. So the first arrondissement is close to the, the Louvre Museum and the Palais Royal, uh, not too far from Notre Dame. So you know that that one is in that particular area. And if that's an area that's appealing to you, then you would simply look through here. Now, hotels.com does have reviews and I always like to look at reviews before I book and see what people have said about that particular hotel. So this one has very good reviews. Uh, Novotel happens to be a chain. I actually stayed in a Novotel in New York City years ago and it was one of my favorite places to stay. So I, as far as I'm concerned, you can't really go wrong with a Novotel. They, they do offer very nice accommodations. And so here they're listing all of their rooms and be careful. Some of them are non-refundable. Uh, some of them, if you book it now and pay for it now, it's non-refundable, but you get a better rate. So there is that. So we have hotels.com, we have Expedia. Another place that you can look for hotel rooms is TripAdvisor. So I'm going to go to Paris. Ile de France is basically Paris, the center of Paris, where most people like to stay. So that's what I'm going to click on and looking for dates. So once again, I'm going to put in my fictitious 24th to the 30th, get rid of that. One room for two adults. And now TripAdvisor is going to populate all kinds of places. And so I look here. Now I typically do not book on any of these third party sites. As I think I mentioned before, I always get the best rate if I book directly on the hotel website. 
TripAdvisor is my favorite place to go, though, to read hotel reviews. And that doesn't change whether I book a hotel or, or find a hotel that I like on Hotels.com or Expedia or Google Hotels. Wherever I find it before I book, I go to TripAdvisor.com and I read the reviews. And then if I'm satisfied, like here's one I've not heard of before. It says it's 2.6 miles from the Paris Center, but let's pull that up. And again, here is the address, and we see that because the last two numbers are 15, it is in the 15th arrondissement. So we come over here to our map of the arrondissements, and it's over um, near the Montparnasse Tower, which is this huge tower in Paris not too far from the Jardin du Luxembourg, um, which is a gorgeous garden. I tend to prefer to stay in this area, the 5th, the 6th, um, even the 3rd over here, 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th. I, I prefer to stay in this particular area. But there are some people who like to stay in the Sacre Coeur area where it's way up on the hill in an area called Montmartre. Sacre Coeur is the cathedral that sits just at the top of the hill, the Montmartre Hill. And then there are a lot of hotels up here in this particular area. But as I said, I, I tend to look in this area here. If I want to go up to the Montmartre area, I simply get in a a metro and go anywhere in the city that I'd like to go. So uh, let's get back to the Hotel Victoria Palace. When you're looking at hotels in Paris, it's just like booking a hotel here in the United States. You want to look at the, the rooms um, and see if there is a particular room that you prefer and then you click on book so i mean that's pretty straightforward just like when you book travel here in the u.s so there's not a lot of difference so i'm not really gonna dwell on that alternatives to a hotel which is something that we often do the first thing that I will do is go to airbnb.com. Now, I like airbnb.com uh, mostly because I've used it many times in the past during vacations. And I will opt for an Airbnb if we are going to be staying in a particular city for maybe four or five days or more. The benefit of selecting an Airbnb is, first of all, you're you're selecting a full apartment. Well, in, in our case, we are. I typically am not just looking for a room. So you, you have the ability to search for an apartment with a kitchen, uh, with a washing machine. And so if you're in Europe, in some cases, you may even find a dryer. Um, rarely not, but if you do, well, that's fantastic. And even in the United States, you may be lucky enough to find a washing machine and a dryer. And if you're going to be traveling for a while, it's great to be staying someplace where you can toss all of your clothes into the washing machine before you go on to your next destination. And it reduces how much you have to pack. And if you haven't watched my video on packing everything into a carry-on suitcase, I will put a link to it so that you check that one out next. Okay, so here we are at Airbnb. And the first thing you're gonna do, you have to sign up in order to book something. And so you register, it doesn't cost anything to register on the site, but you do have to fill out a profile. Okay, so 
Once you've got a profile, then you decide, first of all, where are you going? So I am going to select Paris. Again, we're working with our fictitious vacation, uh, check-in dates from September 24th until September 30th. And I'm going to put two adults. And if I'm gonna be bringing uh, my little dog, I would put that there. There aren't a whole lot of Airbnbs from my own experience that allow pets, unless it's a service animal. So keep that in mind. Typically we leave our little dog at home and make other arrangements. So we put in that we're looking for an accommodation in Paris for two people and click search. And now it gives me a whole bunch of places to look at. And it shows me where they're located in Paris so that I don't need to pull up my arrondissement map. So for example, let's see what we have here. Uh, let's look at the Latin Quarter. So here in the Latin Quarter, we have one for 167 a night. Now, they've converted the prices to US dollars. So let's pick this $167 one here. And now we have pictures. If you click on the picture, you can scroll through and see what this apartment looks like and see if it will meet your needs. I like this little door that opens. And they've got some views from outside of the apartment here. Of course, everybody wants to show the Eiffel Tower at night. And this is say, saying that it's a 10 minute by walk, or I'm sorry, by walking, a 10 minute walk from the apartment, the, the Quai de la Seine. So there is that option. And then we'll get out of the pictures and then we scroll down. And here's where the owner will describe the space. And it looks like they're even allowing a rental for half day or time. Um, I guess if you just need to change clothes or something, Wow, that's an interesting idea. Now it does say that there's no washing machine. So if washing machine was important to you, this is not going to be the place. Okay, now I always read the reviews. The reviews are very important. And here we have our stay was incredible. Um, Daniel's apartment was cute and quaint. Lots of interesting reviews. That's going to be the best judge of whether this is going to be a good place for you to stay. Also, look at the people that are leaving the reviews. If you're in your 60s and you, you want to stay at a particular place and all of the reviews are done by college age kids, um, I, I tend to look at it a little differently. For example, in our 60s, we prefer Airbnbs that are not five flights of steps up. We prefer a building that has an elevator. Not that we're not capable of doing it, but at the end of the day, when you've been walking 10, 20 miles all day long, the last thing you wanna do is then walk up four flights of steps that are sometimes uneven shaped steps in very, very old buildings that whirl around spiral staircase and sometimes the light goes out before you get to the top. There are so many reasons why we wouldn't want to stay in a place that has steps, but that's us. So I always look to see if there are reviews by people that are in our age range and base my decision on whether I think it would be a good place on who the people are that are leaving reviews not personally who they are, but what age range. Is this going to be a good place for people in our 60s? Now, you also want to read about the person who hosts this. So you click on his picture all the way at the bottom 
and it says he joined in 2016 and he lives in Paris. His identity has been reviewed. Um, and then these are reviews that people left him for other properties. Now, when I'm booking on Airbnb, we tend to look for places that have this uh, super host in the corner of the post. So let me click on, let me find one that says super host. Um, hey, let's try this one. this also it's an entire unit click on the picture and well that's a nice staircase you don't mind that after having a lot of wine all day I think that's a charming apartment um, I also tend to prefer a shower I'm used to taking showers here in the United States it's good to look at the pictures here if you're a shower person too this may not be appealing to you because it looks like he's only got a bathtub and in order to take a shower type shower, you're going to hold the handle with one hand and soap up with the other. So that's just something to think about if you're, particularly if you're a woman with long hair and you've got a lot of hair to wash. Okay. Now it looks like, oh, I see here. He's got his tub over here and he's got another shower without walls over on the other side of the bathroom. So there's your shower, if the shower is important to you. It looks like he's got a rainwater shower head. Okay, so those are his pictures. And let's get out of that. And his price is 203 a night. It's at the bottom of the Montmartre Hill in the 9th arrondissement. And he's got, uh, they call that an Italian shower, that shower that's just out there in the open like that. So if you see that, that's what that is. And you click on show all amenities. And these are all of the things you'll find in his Airbnb. Now, because I have long hair, I'm always looking for a hair dryer. It saves me on having to uh, carry one in my suitcase. This Airbnb has a washer and a dryer and it includes towels, bed sheets, soap, toilet paper. Now, just so you know, not all Airbnbs in Europe will include bed sheets unless you pay an extra cost or an extra fee. Most of the ones that I've stayed, well, I haven't stayed in any that didn't, but I always look to make sure that among the essentials are towels, bed sheets, soap, and toilet paper. Now, when they say soap and toilet paper, be advised, they may give you one small bar of soap, like, like a guest soap that you'd find in a hotel room. So be prepared to go out to the nearest grocery store and grab yourself a, a full-size bar of soap if you're going to be there for a few days. Toilet paper, the same thing. Don't count on the Airbnb owner to keep bringing you toilet paper. If you're lucky, there will be a full roll and maybe a spare roll, but you should be prepared and not complain if you've got to go out and pick up uh, another couple of rolls. Hangers are also an issue in some places. Um, sometimes if I'm concerned, I'll pack a few hangers in my suitcase if I know that I have some things that absolutely have to hang. An iron is also great for the clothes that get bunched up in your suitcase. If you like to watch TV before you fall asleep in bed, TV is an important thing to look for. Some will note that they get um, international channels. Some will just say TV, which leads me to believe it's just basic cable that they have. If Wi-Fi is important, this is where you're going to find it. And you'll look at what the kitchen includes. And if parking is important, this one says pay parking off premises, in particular in Paris, it's kind of pointless to expect the place is going to include parking. It's really hard to park in Paris. And this one, if you're looking for a long-term stay, particularly for people who may be thinking about um, spending a few months in Paris, 
it appears from this that this person is open to that arrangement. So, and the person has a self check-in with a smart lock. That means they are not going to necessarily be there to greet you, but they will send you instructions on where to get the key. And you won't always find the key right there at the address. In a few cases, we were given instructions to go to uh, a store a few doors down from an Airbnb and ask for somebody. In another case, we had to go into um, what looked like sort of a, a basement of a building. And then there was a combination lock and we had to use that combination. And then inside that little locker was the key to the apartment that was a block away or something like that. So keep that in mind when you're booking Airbnbs. And again, uh, be sure to look at the map. They won't give you the address until you book the accommodation. If you have any questions, it's always a good idea to contact the host. And I do this as a general rule anyway, just to make sure that the host's account wasn't hacked, that there's no problem. And I will simply send a note saying that my husband and I are coming to Paris or wherever on specific dates. And we just wanted to confirm that the apartment is available on those days. Or I may want to ask if the apartment is near something or how far it is from something else. Um, just so that I can make some kind of communication. I come up with some reason to communicate with them. They should respond to you. It tells you how fast they respond. Um, recently, I made a reservation at an Airbnb in Nice and almost a week went by and the person never answered any of my emails. And I thought, well, it, uh, the system allowed me to book. So I went ahead and booked anyway. And then a few days went by and never even got any acknowledgement. Normally, Airbnb owners will acknowledge your, your booking within half a day to tell you that they look forward to hosting you blah 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 if you don't get that i would back out of the reservation that gives me an uncomfortable feeling and that's what we did in nice i contacted airbnb to make sure that we were within a, a limited uh, uh, to make sure that we were within the limited time in order to get a full refund. And I sent the, per the host a message and I said, you've left me no other choice. I'm simply gonna uh, cancel the reservation since you're not responding. And so I then canceled the reservation. The Airbnb system showed me that I was qualified for a full refund. I clicked refund and then I went and booked something else. And subsequently had great communication with that owner. So communication on Airbnb is a must. I've never really had a problem with Airbnbs. That really wasn't my problem that I caused the problem. On a couple of occasions, once in Paris and once in Nice, I neglected to check to find out if there was an elevator. In a lot of old buildings in Europe, there are no elevators. They're also referred to as lifts, L-I-F-T. Um, and so once, one time when we went to Paris, I booked us in this actually beautiful apartment in Paris over near Notre Dame. And I didn't realize that the, we were gonna be on the fourth floor, which is really, compared to the US, it's the fifth floor. So there were four, I'm sorry, five flights of steps and it was a spiral staircase, uneven depths, uneven widths. And my poor husband had to carry our luggage all the way up those steps. And when it was time to leave all the way down and every day we had to go down the steps, not so hard going down, but you had to um, really pay attention because of the, the size of the steps. Um, at the end of the night, when we were dead tired, the last thing we wanted to do was climb those steps. And in Nice, we had a similar issue in that I didn't think to ask if there was an elevator. And that was on our last trip last fall. And we ended up in a very, very nice Airbnb. As a matter of fact, one of my, Air uh, one of my YouTube videos 
gives you a tour of this beautiful Airbnb that we stayed in with this fantastic view of the harbor. But we had to walk up um, to the top, almost the top of the building. And that's how we knew we were on the right floor when we got to the point where there were no more steps, we were there. And it was, it was very tiring. So if you're older or your energy level isn't what it used to be, you need to pay attention to little details like, is there an elevator? Even if you've got to contact the host and actually it gives you a good excuse for calling the host. When I'm booking an Airbnb, I always find something to ask them about because I just want to make contact with the host to make sure nobody's hacked their account, that it's actually the host that, that I am communicating with. You don't have to worry about your money because your host doesn't get any money until you actually check into that location. So it's very safe. But I normally contact the host and I'll ask a question. Uh, it could be, do you have a washing machine if it's not listed there? Or is there an elevator in your building? Or how far are you from something? I come up with one thing just to get them to respond. And then once they respond, then I go ahead and book my reservation. So anyway, the, the details are important. Now, interesting to note on Airbnb, if you're looking for some different types of places to stay, uh, if you look above here on this top screen, you have options. For example, if historical homes are of interest to you, here we have, now these appear to be all over France. Just move the arrow. Whoops, let me get back in France here. Um, and it's got castles, villas. Uh, or just a private room in a castle. And there are some interesting places here. If you for a unique place to stay. Many years ago, my ex-husband and I traveled um, throughout France for almost a month. And on part of our trip, we traveled up the Loire Valley in France and we stopped every night at a different castle and spent the night. This is long before the internet. So I had to book all of these with a fax machine and a French dictionary because I wasn't confident enough in my French language skills um, but here you have all kinds of places to stay um, here's one amazing views so you click on amazing views and now Airbnb is going to find some places with amazing views in France really lovely and let's see, creative spaces. Okay, I'm not sure what they call a creative space. Well, this one looks like it's a, a textile place of some sort. Not really sure what, what we're looking at. It's an artist's studio in the heart of the Loire Valley. And you stay in a sofa bed. Let's look at the pictures of that one. Well, that is definitely different. If you followed my air, um, if you have followed my channel when we vacationed in September and we traveled around through Provence. And actually, we started in saint Emilion in our road trip after Paris. We stayed at some very interesting Airbnbs. So go back into my library of videos from uh, late part of the last few months of last year, and you'll see some of the unique Airbnbs that we stayed in. But this is interesting. That looks like a nice setup that doesn't look so unappealing 
All right, so let's get out of that one. And let's see what other categories we have with it. Airbnb. Um, design. Okay, I guess these are designed by specific architects or interior designers. Uh, tree houses. You can find some very creative housing. Oh my goodness, look at this one right here. That looks way open. Uh, I'm not sure I'd be comfortable with that, but it does look interesting. I wonder how many people book that place. It has 20 reviews. So there must be a fair amount of people that, well, at least 20 people did. And that is also in the Loire Valley in France. Um, basically, you can use Airbnb to book things all over the country, uh, all over the world. You've got a hankering to stay in a yurt. Here we have yurts that are listed on Airbnb. You can pretty much find anything here. Mansions. Now, Primarily, it's searching in France. Um, but there are some very lovely places. If I was staying in a castle and it was a, an Airbnb with a bed and breakfast type theme, I really wouldn't mind just having a room there. This one looks sort of like the White House without the columns. But that should give you an idea of what is available as far as accommodations other than hotels um, when you're booking your trips. Okay, another great place to look for apartments or homes to rent if you're not interested in staying at a hotel is VRBO. And this one is very easy. Um, it's great to just sign up and then you now you can use this i use this primarily here in the united states but they do offer uh, lodging in other parts of the world so for example i'm just going to punch in key west florida and i'm going to pick a check-in date of june 25th to June 30th and it's going to be two adults and oops one more adult and let's say this time I want to bring my little dog since it's here in the U.S. and so they're only going to show me properties that will allow pets so let's see what it says Okay, so there's a town home for a thousand, wow, 1,065 a night. Okay, here is a smaller one. Actually, let's look at this one right off Duval Street. If you know Key West, Duval Street is the main drag through town. So this one is just off Duval, 372 a night. It allows pets and it has two bedrooms, sleeps four. These are the details and the amenities. And it says pets are allowed except for puppies or barking dogs. Hmm, well, that's a problem. I'm always hesitant to bring my dog because here at home, She's like our little guard dog, four pounds of security. Uh, but I don't know if I can trust her not to bark a lot in a hotel. So I'd have to think about that, particularly since they mention it. And then if I want to look at the pictures, well, this is lovely. Look at that. It even has a parking place. You can take a virtual tour press and drag to stay in place. Oh, 
I see. So now we are we're doing a little tour. And that's one bedroom. And there's the bathroom. And there's the other bedroom. Okay, well, that's interesting. Okay, and where was the kitchen? Oh, these are the steps going up to the place. A nice kitchen. That looks like a washer and dryer back behind the curtains there. Well, this is lovely. I'm going to have to remember that's there next time we go to Key West. And it's rated as wonderful. Again, reviews are very, very important. Now, the one thing that I always find with VRBO are fees, host fees, service fees. I, I don't get this. Here they've got a fee of $150, a cleaning fee of $225, a management fee, an administrative fee. I don't understand why they have to have all of those fees, but so be it. That's their thing. Okay, another place to look is Inspirado. Now, Inspirado markets itself as being a place to find uh, very nice higher-end properties. So, oh my goodness, look at those. So let's look at, well, we love South Beach, so let's click on that one and take a look at this property. Lovely balcony, you've got a view of the ocean. Beautiful. Lovely rooms. Um, you can tell this is a step way above a hotel. Now, and let's see. In order to book on Inspirado, you buy a pass for $2,500 a month. That includes all nightly fees, taxes, and fees. Okay, now your pass includes assistance with planning your vacation, an on-site concierge service, daily housekeeping. So this is the epitome of luxury. Introducing the new Inspirado Pass, now with even more flexibility, value, and trip choices. Before you get started planning your first or next vacation, we want to share a few updates to our reservation process. You can choose from some of our favorite suggestions or simply use the search bar. Let's assume you're open to any destination. From the property page, you'll notice there are about 1.2 million trip options in multiple destinations. Let's narrow down the list a bit with the filters. We'll choose five nights in a home on a beach. Still 30,000 trip options. Now let's assume we want to go somewhere in April 2022. Next to the check-in button, you'll also notice a button for past days. Past days are a way of comparing trips. Each reservation will put your available pass in use for a number of days when you won't be able to make another reservation. However, as soon as those days are complete, your pass is available again. It doesn't matter when the check-in date is. Here you can choose how many days you are willing to wait until that next reservation. So let's see what's available in April. We'll be flexible with our check-in date, but we don't want to put our pass in use for more than 60 days, which if today is October 5th, will be December 6th. There are nearly 900 options. Here's a great house in Punta de Mita, Mexico, with three bedrooms. Here we see there are six different trips available with April check-in dates and require 55 pass days. They are all valued at nearly $5,800, which after two pass payments of $2,200 each, means you're getting a 32% discount on this trip. That's just one of over a million examples of the great flexibility and value you can experience by subscribing to Inspirado Pass. Learn more today, inspiradopass.com. Another option that I just learned about is Plum Guide. 
Now, this is an alternative to Airbnb. It's a company based in the UK that created this one. So let me just pick Paris, France. And I'm going to use my fictitious travel days of September 24th to the 30th, two guests and search. And here you'll see the same arrondissement map, just like we had on Airbnb. And we have all of the options that are available. And let's see what looks interesting. Uh, I'm gonna look at this one at the Eiffel Tower for 419. It's in an area called the Marais. So let's pull that up. There we go. Now it got it pulled up. Okay, this one has a gorgeous view of the Eiffel Tower. Very nice. And let's look at all of the amenities. Okay, now under bedroom and laundry, it says iron. So my assumption is that this place does not supply linens because it's not listed. Under bathroom, it does not say towels. So in this particular accommodation, it appears that you would need to provide your own towels and linens, although perhaps they offer a package. And let's see what else, all the details. Three minutes to the nearest bus stop. The kitchen at Small does not have a kitchen. I mean, uh, it does not have a refrigerator. One, even though the host is Kevin, it's managed by a business. Whether I'm dealing with Airbnb or Plum, I prefer to stay in homes that are managed by the person who owns the house. Okay, so let's look at all of the pictures. Oh, that's interesting. Everything is literally in one room. Even the toilet is right there out in the open. Um, that would not appeal to me. <laughs> I just need some privacy. I love my husband, but we don't need to watch each other go to the bathroom in the bedroom. That's very strange. Okay, this definitely would not be a place for us. And those are the primary places that I look for lodging when I am booking our weekend getaways and vacations wherever. If you have found my video to be informative and helpful, I'd appreciate it if you would do me a favor and give me a thumbs up so YouTube will show it to lots more people. And I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.